Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2017 MSI plans. Fans are already loading into the Asturias Quanta in Sao Paulo, Brazil to get in on that action. Of course, an exciting day of games ahead of us and already crowd looking pretty full up. TSM fans, Gigabyte Marines fans all aside. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Dracos and taking over the analyst desk with me today is Zach Rusty Pie and James Tresselieri. How are you feeling guys? Fantastic, happy to be here. Yeah, feeling great. Welcome to you. I, yeah, you know, I've get been to watching the from behind the scenes. Now I've like I've taken the the shocks, the dash training. Now I'm here on the desk for <laughs> you guys. But of course, it's been an exciting uh, the first round of plans already going through. We've lost so many teams along the way. What were your thoughts kind of on the group stage overall? Yeah, honestly, it's been a surprising journey, especially for the teams playing today. But there's a little bit of sadness you'd have to imagine in the air that the Red Cannons didn't quite make it to the live finals here. A little bit of sadness. The crowd were firmly behind them, but honestly, the crowd so far have been behind everybody. I think that may change up a bit now that TSM take to the stage because we're getting into now round two, the toughest stages. TSM, Flash Wolves, they come in. Now is the chance to qualify for MSI. Yeah, very exciting to see who's going to make it through. But of course, if you want to participate in the MSI and during MSI only, you can unlock the 2017 MSI Conqueror Karma Bundle. With that bundle, you unlock a commemorative board skin, plus a border and an icon that's exclusive to MSI 2017. And with 25% of all those purchases being added to the MSI prize pool, Conqueror Karma is on sale now. So make sure to pick her up anytime between now and May 24th before she goes into the Legacy Vault to contribute to that prize pool to get yourself a six skin overall. Great deal. But before we get into today's matchup, let's pull up the bracket and see what our week of games is going to look like and talk a little bit about that stakes. First, we have TSM facing off against the representative from the GPL, the Gigabyte Marine. Tomorrow we see Turkey super massive looking to take down the Flash Wolves from the LMS. And of course the winners from these first two matchups of round two move directly into the MSI group stage. The losers will face one another with one last chance to get in on that final spot for the MSI groups. Luxury of double elimination. Worry not TSM fans. If you go down today you will get another shot. Although we'll see. We'll turn our attention to that matchup Already right now. Already firing shots. I, it is an EU <laughs> caster. It's kind of in, it's in the ingrained in me. All right, well, it's TSM coming up first against Gigabyte Marines. And for TSM, they're coming in hot. They won that NALCS fifth title in a row, or not in a row, rather, fifth title overall. Fantastic performance. And it wasn't hot during the split for TSM. That's the thing you have to remember. They finished reasonably dominant, but even in the finals, they were coming in a second fiddle to Cloud9. They weren't exactly the standout performers, but then they showed up when it matters most. And, most, and namely, it speaks towards Haunts are actually getting a lot better, where the rest of the team did still have some inconsistency. Yeah, we've seen insane performances from the TSM. I'm so in. Bjergsen, obviously a titan worldwide, not just in NA, and Hanser really stepping up, making a name for himself, consistently a top performer in the NA LCS. And I think that's the interesting thing. You look at TSM, yes, strong solo lane is absolutely a benefit to them, but you look at the region they come from now. This is where MSI, the clash of all the different regions, really shows itself. It's like NA is regarded as one of the regions that do have a firmer grasp on strategy. So it's not only about those solo laners. You look at the way they implement coaching staff, the way they make players on the map. Macro game is going to be a big strength for TSM as well. 
absolutely something they have to play for, look to take advantage of in this series, because today they're going to be going up against the Gigabyte Marines, who came into this tournament not only underestimated, but kind of underappreciated at first, but we saw that change very quickly in their first few games. And it's kind of amusing that we did come into this tournament underestimating the Vietnamese <laughs> side, right? Because they dominate in their own VCS League, they come into the GPL qualifiers against five other regions, I believe, and dominate that as well. Basically undefeated the whole way through to this tournament. They go five and one, and I wouldn't even call that one defeat a genuine defeat, because they'd already qualified <laughs> by that stage. They were just throwing themselves at everybody. So for what it's worth, underappreciating this team can prove to be a mistake. And not only just before the games, but in games as well. A lot of teams were overlooking the decisive calls the uh, the Gigabyte Marines were making, just going for Baron or making set plays, like looking at teleport plays. Like Everything was on a pretty high level for the, the GPL's Gigabyte Marines. And now you've got to look at the individuals that we've been talking about, Levi, Optimus. They are one of the big sticking points for the Gigabyte Marines, but they match up against Sven Skerin and Bjergsen. and that's a scary duo to have to face in jungle and mid yourself. Yeah, Levi going up against Sven Skerin, this feels like a very intense jungle matchup. Now, of course, Sven Skerin had a bit of an inconsistent split, but still very much a strong jungler overall. What are you guys' thoughts on that match? Yeah, Sven Skerin is one of the places when you look at TSM's roster that perhaps the Gigabyte Marines could attack, potentially exploit, and it comes towards the tendencies of Sven Skerin as a jungler. He likes to invade. He's often found alone, caught in places where he has no right being, and that is because he's always invading and against a jungler like Levi, he will punish you. He will, if nothing else, he will fight you for that area, that territory. We, we've map. definitely seen him fight a whole lot. Now, it's interesting to me because we've seen like, these guys kind of take, to a certain degree, very similar champions overall. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, are we going to see the jungle pool be very contested when it comes to fighting between these two? Teams? I think you got to look at the Lee Sin, you've got to look at the Graves. But there is one outlier that we haven't seen yet from Levi, and that's the Ivan. TSM have played it a number of times, and it is a champion that, you know, can scale later into the game. TSM playing maybe a slower game can look to scale up and not allow the snowball style that the Gigabyte Marines were showing to crush their opponents in round one of the MSI planes. And of course, Ivern's just been an immensely popular pick throughout the tournament thus far, so it feels like it has to be high priority. Do you think there's any chance we're going to see Levi pick that up, or is this just something that the Gigabyte Marines need to ban away? I think there's no chance we'll see Levi play it. It's just not his <laughs> style as a player. Right? He's an aggressive, kill-oriented jungler. He'll go from his red buff to the blue buff and then look for kills immediately. You compare that to Sven Skerin, perhaps picking someone like Ivern for TSM actually tempers his aggression because whilst you can invade, it's about taking the camps, not for fighting, and that could be ultimately where Svenskaren does go down. So a champion that TSM should look towards. Well, as important as the jungle is, we kind of have to look at what lanes they're going to be affecting. And for me, the lane that we have to watch is that mid lane. Optimus going up against Bjergsen. Optimus, a legend in his own region. Bjergsen, it's the same story. I'm really curious to see how this one is going to go. Oh, exactly. This is uh, another one of these matchups where on paper there's so much that can differ because Bjergsen, at least over the last year, has shown us a lot of different styles. It's not necessarily about Bjergsen carrying for himself. A lot of Talia in recent times too. So he can also go up, whether it's top lane or bot lane, try and get the other lanes going. But Optimus, is going to struggle to get the same kind of leads, in my opinion, that he got against the other mid laners in the group stage of round one. Bjergsen just is a very solid laner, so difficult to put yeah, it Yeah, and that's, that's the key word, is solid. He's actually the most consistent player on this team, you'd think it's safe to say, right? The solo lane is a strength on this team, but Hornser is more of the star power. And not to take away from Bjergsen being a star by any means, but he's just the rock. He'll never mm. lose lane. And if Optimus actually manages to crack that shell, then TSM would be broken wide open. Definitely a, a tough bet, though, to try to take down Bjergsen here on the stage. Now, we look at both these teams. Gigabyte Marines, maybe not the favorites in this series. If you're playing on their side, what are you going to do to try to take down TSM? What is the avenue to shutting down this team? I think it's early aggression through their jungler. The first and biggest thing you have to do when you look at the draft and how that reflects that is try and get the lease in, the Elise or something like that for yourself, but also have a pushing mid lane, a pushing potentially top laner or somewhere that can influence the map. You disregard bottom lane because that's what TSM's doing and their win condition is usually on the top half of the map and you try and beat them where you're strong. You don't play towards your own weaknesses. That is difficult at the same time though when your enemy's strengths are like almost identical at that point and you look at the, the top and bottom in which we are saying maybe not the strongest points for the Marines mm -hmm. themselves, it, it might very well be tough. If you're so used to Levi and Optimus getting these massive leads, suddenly Sven Skerin and Bjergsen aren't giving away a lot of deaths or you know any kind of lead. I want to see how the Marines react to an even played game against a team that can hang with them on both an individual and a strategic level. That's why I think this is such an intriguing matchup between these two teams. Very exciting. Of course, you can see the players now walking onto the stage. Roar of the crowd for that reception. Has to feel good for both these guys. And of course, 
TSM Chant. We had him in the EU final, too. No matter where you go, you hear TSM Chant it. But this time, it is the right time. It's TSM on stage, looking pretty confident. And this is, a, you know, an important matchup for them. They didn't make it to MSA last year. It was CLG that came through. So, at least for the organization, there's a little bit more on the line. Not only are you facing one of the, uh, quote-unquote, emerging regions coming through here, this should be somewhat of a comfortable game. When you look at it, region versus region, NA have always been known to at least qualify to the main stage, the groups of MSI, and typically have done well before. But they have been known to lose to wildcard teams when it comes to yep. these tournaments <laughs> as well. So there's always going to be something playing on the minds of the NA region. Fortunately for CLG, they avoid losing to them as they're not going to be competing. TSM will be hungry to improve that. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I think we can say that there is a ton of pressure on TSM, but also when we look at the two teams, we expect there to be a slight difference in the macro mm -hmm. ability of TSM moving forward. Now, looking at TSM, is this kind of the opportunity for you to show something new? You've had a bunch of weeks to practice. You've had the opportunity to improve the team play even more than what we saw in the finals. What do we expect to see from them? I actually have an expectation in the first game. It'll be the most standard thing that you'll see from TSM, right? This is the opportunity for the Gigabyte Marines to show a strategy, to try and cause an upset and actually force TSM to start at least revealing their hand. Because if you're TSM, you would actually be approaching this game like, yes, it's important. Yes, it gets me to MSI. But my crazy strategy should be saved for the Koreans, mm -hmm. for the Europeans, for the Chinese, and potentially LMS or Turkish teams that we'll be up against in the main event. And to that point, we saw a somewhat of a diversity of strategy from TSM through their playoff runs. It wasn't necessarily one comp that got them through. We saw differences in top lane, whether it was the Camille coming through. I think there's enough uh, of champion pool depth for the team that in a best of five, I think the, the Gigabyte Marines may very well take a game. Getting the lease in, getting a strong mid laner, I think they could, but the adaptation that comes from that from TSM, I think, is what will be difficult to handle. Yeah, that's the most important thing for TSM as a team. You have to have expectations that their adaptation in defeats would be way too good, and you have to have constantly bringing out new strategies, reinventing how you're playing the game. Absolutely. Well, whether you're cheering for the GPL, NA, or any other region, make sure you show your support during the 2017 NMS, or MSI Fandom Battle. You can participate with the 1 IP icon or the 250 RP icon. Get yourself some sweet BM emotes for the game. Winners at the end of the tourney get an exclusive icon, and their region will get a three-day IP boost. Now, in first place right now, CB Law coming in strong. Second place, LL. And third place is the EU LCS. And Woo! <laughs> Over the course of the tournament, we will be checking on and in on who's in the lead throughout the entire tournament. So tell your friends, one IP. Get yourself an icon. Have a great time. But, of course, before we get into the match, let's send it over to a piece about how Optimus from the Gigabyte Marines got his start in the competitive scene. I played Liên Minh Phải từ năm 2012. And at the time, I was just playing DJ Net to play the game. But slowly, I saw everyone trong cùng một quán uh, internet họ chơi cùng với nhau và em cũng muốn là có những người chơi chung nên em mới dần dần tìm sang là chơi chung với họ anh ấy là một diễn thủ tài năng có nhiều kinh nghiệm và rất tự tin trong những pha xử lý của mình Optimus luôn tạo được sự tin tưởng cho đồng đội kể cả trong game đứng ngoài đời trong game thì uh, là một hội nhóc rất là nghiêm túc và luôn hướng tới chiến thắng của team lên hàng đầu còn ngoài đời thì hơi là cũng có một chút vui vẻ nhưng mà cũng có một chút gì đó gọi là khó gần ở GBL thì cũng uh, nhiều nhưng mà ở trên giải mà uh, ở uh, khu vực quay cạc cũng như là thế giới thì em thế giới thì em chưa và quay cạc thì em đây là lần đầu tiên Hello everyone.